All right, so uh, we're going to do a teaching case here, or teaching point. Uh, we're going to review an epicardial fat pad. This was is a common pitfall that I see frequently when I review or QA studies that a lot of people will see an epicardial fat pad and mistaken it for a pericardial effusion. I think this is a good example to show what a epicardial fat pad looks like, so I'd like to share that with you guys. And to help us do that is uh, Dr. Todd Crane. He's our uh, ultrasound fellow, and, and he recently gave us a uh, video on pericardial effusions and would like him to follow up with this epicardial fat pad. So yeah, I agree with Dr. Marks. This is a very common finding that we'll see on bedside uh, cardiac ultrasound. And so I think in order to kind of learn what um, this is and contrast it to a pericardial effusion, I would encourage you to go back over the pericardial effusion lecture if you haven't done that first. Um, that will help to help us, you know, diagnose and find the clinical features uh, or ultrasound features of a pericardial effusion, and then we can contrast that to epicardial fat pad, which we'll see here. So to remind you, here we have uh, the cartoons of the anatomy and where the probe orientation is going to be on the patient as we're performing our ultrasound. We'll start with our parasternal long axis view of the heart, and you'll see here. This was labeled, we'll see in multiple uh, views, what was labeled as a pericardial effusion and we'll be able to identify this in fact as a pericardial fat pad. Here we have the wall of the right ventricular outflow tract anteriorly and here we have the area which I th the uh, people performing the ultrasound were concerned was a pericardial effusion. Typically, and most often, very, very rarely will we see uh, a non-anechoic pericardial effusion. That will be more of a chronic finding uh, with a chronic pericardial effusion. Typically, every time I've seen one, it's going to be anechoic, the same color or findings on your ultrasound as what's inside the heart here, your normal blood. And that will be present here. It will also track posteriorly back here behind the heart on the more towards the left ventricle side. And to remind you, here is the descending aorta, the circular structure here, and a pericardial effusion will track up and anterior in front of the descending aorta. Here, all we see is this echogenic area, which also looks the same as the subcutaneous uh, tissue of the patient. Um, and this is what they were originally concerned with was a pericardial effusion. And in this case, it's a pericardial fat pad. Now, I just want to clarify. So when you're talking about a chronic effusion having some echoes in it, are you referring to the fibrous bands that develop, or can you clarify that some? Yeah, I think you'll, you'll have some fibrous, some, some more fibrous structures that will then be more echogenic on your ultrasound as opposed to just simple fluid collection, which, as, as blood is, is just a simple fluid collection which would surround the heart. Yeah, so I think that's important for uh, people to realize is you'll still have the anechoic region, but you may see some echoes within it. Uh, and usually they're pretty band-like, and so they're easier to differentiate. Definitely different than what we're seeing here of this isochoic or hyperechoic structure anterior to the right ventricle. Here we're moving on to uh, our parasternal short axis. We've moved our probe orientation. And a limited view here, it looks like, but we can again see this area anteriorly, which is more echogenic or isoechoic to the subcutaneous uh, tissue and again does not appear to be anechoic or circumferential in this case. In this particular study, an apical four chamber was not performed. It would be important to do this for a complete study. Um, however, I don't think it would add too much to help clarify necessarily a pericardial effusion from a fat pad. And then our, our last view of the heart is going to be the sub xiphoid view. Um, we have Again, this area here, which is similarly appearing to our subcutaneous tissue as well as the ventricular wall. And in this case, it is very nicely demonstrated to be right on top of the heart, uh, the right ventricular wall. And it moves with, contracts with the right ventricular wall and does not appear to be a separate structure. Again, appears to be similarly colored um, and looks most like and is an epicardial fat pad. I agree. Um, you know, and I think epicardial fat pads are thought to only happen around the right ventricle or the right lower pressured system. And so this is a key finding. If you're only seeing this under the, around the right ventricle, you know, maybe take a second to think or to observe it a little bit more and say, is this an epicardial fat pad versus a pericardial effusion? And in this case with the internal echoes that clearly, uh, 
move with the right ventricle is a uh, fat pad. And lastly, we're going to look at our inferior vena cava with every echo that we do. This is not uh, going to differentiate effusion versus fat pad. However, this would be important if you do have a pericardial effusion to determine uh, tamponade physiology, is your IVC plethoric or not. In this case, it clearly collapses uh, with respiration. So to summarize, the read from this ultrasound would uh, go as uh, normal to preserve ejection fraction. With no evidence of pericardial effusion, what we were able to demonstrate with this discussion was that it is indeed a, a pericardial or epicardial fat pad. And we talked about the differences between why this does not appear to be a pericardial effusion. And if, you, if you're still kind of struggling with this, I would encourage you to go back to the uh, pericardial effusion lecture or podcast that we just talked about. We demonstrated that the IVC does collapse greater than 50%, and we reviewed why the features of an uh, epicardial fat pad. Great. Uh, thanks for walking us through that, uh, Todd, and uh, um, appreciate that. The, this is a definite pitfall that exists for um, uh, anybody doing cardiac ultrasound, and it's easily uh, missed or misinterpreted, so I appreciate uh, you walking us through that. Thanks. Absolutely.